Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and this is Maker.io. In today's video, we're going to be learning about how to turn the Raspberry Pi into a web server. So why would you want to do this? Well, there are a number of reasons. Now, the current IoT dashboard that we've been developing works on a Windows machine. Now, Windows provides a lot of opportunities and features and languages and pretty cool stuff you can do. But to be honest, all this stuff we can also do on the Pi. Now, the program we've been using to run the website has been uh, Easy PHP. Uh, there's the dev version and the web version. The dev version is for development and the web version is for hosting. But to my knowledge, these aren't available for the Raspberry Pi. But that is not an issue because there is a very easy way we can turn this thing into a web server. So let's see how we do it. But just before we go into actually learning how to do it, I wanted to bring up two other points as well. There are two other very good reasons for using a Raspberry Pi as a web server instead of a Windows machine. And the first one comes down to power consumption. Now, most Windows machines run on large uh, tablet, uh, not tablet, sorry, tower PCs, uh, even laptops or sometimes tablets. But again, they tend to be very uh, beefy for the job in hand, especially if you're only going to be uh, dealing with a few a handful of devices. You know, you're not talking about 10,000 devices trying to connect to your IoT dashboard. You're talking about maybe 10 or 20 devices around the home. So using a Windows-based machine, which tends to be a tower PC, is a bit of an overkill. And it would probably make sense if that computer was doing something a bit more useful with its time. The other reason for using a Raspberry Pi is uh, convenience in terms of size. Now you look at the size of a Raspberry Pi. Now this thing can run your IoT dashboard just as well as a Windows machine. Yet it, it's that big and it can be powered by a USB um, charger. And there are some uh, power outlets such as the ones behind me. Uh, oh, sorry, not the ones behind me, the ones over there. Sorry, you can't see them on the camera, but they are um, power sockets that you, know, you can power mains devices with a plug, but they also integrate a USB charge port. And if you power one of those, sorry, if you power the Raspberry Pi with one of those, then you're gonna have very uh, you know, happy days because those kind of charge ports provide a, a lot of current, at least 2.1 amps of current at five volts. And that is the maximum you can basically do with USB 2.0. And that is all that this thing needs. So you never get that weird power issue because sometimes you'll notice that if you connect your Raspberry Pi to a charger that cannot supply the current it needs, you get that tiny little uh, squiggly uh, electrical symbol that appears on the top right or the top left of the window. And that's basically just saying the Pi hasn't got enough power. So that is a really good reason to use a Raspberry Pi as a web server instead of a Windows machine. So now let's see how we do that. Now the first thing you want to go ahead and do is get yourself a remote connection to the Pi. You can plug this up to a display, a keyboard, a mouse, a power supply, and then do all of this on the Pi itself. But, and that's how I would normally do it. Uh, well, that's how I would have done it when I first learned about using the Pi. But then, Network programming and network control and remote control really just appealed to me almost instantly because suddenly you could access this like a serial device across a terminal and it kind of makes more sense if you don't need the graphical user interface. interface. It's so much simpler, it's so much easier than trying to find a HDMI display, trying to get it all set up, use all the power ports and get yourself a whole computer set up just so you can do a few commands. So try and get a remote connection established with the Pi. It is also dead easy to do. So there is really no excuse for accessing this um, using a display and a keyboard if you do have a capability to access it remotely. Now, once you have your remote connection established, you'll need to go ahead and install the Apache PHP web server. Now, to do this, you'll need to run the following command. Now, once the apt get update command has been uh, completed, you'll need to go ahead and then install the Apache uh, server by using the sudo apt-get install apache2 and then dash y command. Now this will happen automatically and once it is done, you can go ahead and then install the PHP engine. Now you'll notice that this command installs Apache and Apache is for running web servers, you know, in HTML, but it doesn't run PHP. You have to get this separately. So to get PHP working on your web server, you will then need to use the sudo apt get install php libapache2-mod-php-y command. Once you've got your PHP system running on your web server, it's time to test the website. And you can do this by visiting the um, Raspberry Pi's local uh, area network address. 
Now up to this point, our web server is now running, but we haven't got the files we want. Now we could try and transfer our web files that we've been developing on our Windows machine onto the Raspberry Pi using a file transfer program. Uh, I think one, a popular one is called WinSCP. Um, and this won't work simply because you need to have permissions to the folder in, uh, that you want that holds the website files. You can't just write to them. You have to get permission first. So to do that, we go back into our terminal prompt and we've used the following command, sudo chown pi and then a little colon and then pi dash r and then the path to which the website files are stored. And at this point, we can see that the website files are stored under forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html. Now you could change the location where the Apache web server actually stores the website files, but I find it quicker just to own the directory instead and then just write to it uh, all the files that we need to put onto it. And once we have ownership of the uh, folder, we can go ahead and transfer our files in and I'm using the WinCSP application. And once we have done that, we can go ahead and test the website again to see if the PHP system is working. And if it is working, the website should load normally. Now, before we wrap up this video, there is one other thing I want to mention about the Raspberry Pi as a web server. The Raspberry Pi gives you some potential opportunities that you wouldn't normally get with a Windows machine, or at least not as easily. The Raspberry Pi, as I've always said, I like to see it more of, or I like to see it as an overcharged microcontroller more than a computer. And one of the reasons for this is the GPIO header, and this allows us to read, um, you know, external circuits and stuff like that. So if you build a web server with something like a Raspberry Pi, you could actually utilize the GPIO to do some pretty cool things. For instance, you could make your own custom web server rack, which uses the GPIO to read and write to little LEDs and stuff. So you can have some really cool blinking lights telling you how many users are accessing it, um, what they're accessing. You could say the, the rate of which data is being transferred. You could literally build your own lookalike of those commercial rack systems, but you could put all your own custom hardware in. You could even have it read off um, circuitry and report back to a website. So you could turn this into an IoT device at the same time as running a web server. Um, You've got a camera ports, display ports. There's so much potential in the Raspberry Pi that if I was to do my next web, ser uh, web server project, in actual fact, any web server project I'll be doing in the future, I will probably stick with the Pi. Uh, it's quite funny actually, because I used to be very negative of these to the point I was quite resistant thinking, oh, what's the point in a Raspberry Pi? It's just a Linux machine. Oh, okay, it's got a few GPIO. I'd rather just use a microcontroller. And I was quite hesitant to use it in certain projects. But what I've noticed is that really the Pi isn't really a project for that you know that Arduinos could do. So if you're gonna read some digital circuits, you might as well do it on an Arduino. But what the Pi gives you, it gives you the power of a desktop PC. Uh, you know, access to some complex languages, high-level languages like Python and C and stuff, but gives you the microcontroller format. You've got your GPIO and your uh, capacity to access to hardware, and it makes the Pi a fantastic development machine for what I'd like to call mid-range projects. So you know, your Arduino is going to control stepper motors and stuff like that, but your Pi is going to run the web server and read sensors at the same time. So that's all we have time for today in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.